as before House of Dragon coming up Sunday, you uh, you may be privy to another beatdown of sorts. Or at least, Jake, this is where, this is where I really want to pick your brain, your NFL brain here. Because when you look at this Falcons roster and this depth chart that they just released, it is objectively awful seeing, right? Um, quarterback, Marcus Mariota. Running back, Cordero Patterson. Patterson's good, right? Uh, wide receivers. I, Drake London may or may not play. I did go on Atlanta radio yesterday. They seem to say they think Drake London will play. But if it is not, you're talking about Kadero Hodge, Olamide Zacchaeus, Brian Edwards, and then you got Kyle Pitts. You have fullback on the math. You got Jake Matthews, like what, whatever. So no names all across the offensive skill positions. You look on defense. The one player I've heard of is Grady Jarrett. Yeah. Um, you ever heard of Anthony Rush? Nope. Uh, Richie Grant. Hey, okay, AJ Terrell's on there. But is AJ Terrell good in the NFL? He's been pretty good so okay, far. Okay, he has been pretty good? Yeah. It's, it's tough after what, you know, what else you did to him back in the day. But the point is, if you put the Saints roster and the Falcons roster next to each other, I feel like if this was a college matchup, we would be talking about how uh, the Saints should cover, like, by 10 or be fair by, like, 10 or half or 11. What is the spread right now on this? It was five and a half last I looked. Okay, so the reason why I bring that up, what is it about the NFL? What is it about this Falcons team right now that has this at five and a half when you have a Saints roster featuring like Jarvis Landry, uh, Mike Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Jameis Winston on defense. You have Cam Jordan. Uh, you have Tyron Matthew. It's You have Marshawn Lattimore. Like you have actual guys. How is it five and a half? Well, because they still got Jimmys and Joes. Even though we don't know them, we don't cover the Falcons. We cover the Saints. And the Saints have more you know, names that I think everyone across the league would know. But they're still going to have guys on that roster. Like A.J. Terrell, look, we know him because Jamar Chase put him on his highlight tape. Yes. I mean, when Jamar got drafted, it was really like, hey, here's A.J. Terrell time and time and time again, right? But he's actually been a really good player in the NFL. Casey Hayward's played a lot of football. He's been an all-pro it's just that was on the other side okay. of his career, okay. but he's somebody that has that in his past. You mentioned Grady Jarrett. So I think we could go down the list like Jay Matthews, right? High pick, Kyle Pitts. People are calling him a generational tight end. Kyle Pitts a beast. They just don't have the totality of a roster that can compete with someone like the Saints. They have pieces, and that's why you see a spread that's less than a touchdown because they still have – you know, guys that have got, I mean, Marcus Mariota is on the, you know, obviously he's trying to bounce back. He's on the other side of whatever we thought maybe he could be, but he does have talent. Cordell Patterson, kind of jack of all trades. So that's why you see that. And I was talking about it, was that Monday or Tuesday? We were talking about when you're preparing for an NFL game, you don't even really care about the opponent's record. Like, that's not even something you think about, yeah, look at, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know that like your individual matchups, like whoever's playing safety, it's going to be a sign to Kyle Pitts. You think they care that the Falcons roster is awful? No. No, they're sure. thinking about Kyle Pitts. I mean, if you're going right. against Jake Matthews, you know, do you care about the Falcons roster? No, you know Jake Matthews, pretty damn good left tackle. So that's that's kind of the difference. And and this is still the time of year, too, when everybody has hope and belief in themselves and you haven't yet fallen flat on your face. Like, remember how good the Panthers thought they were for a little bit last year before kind of reality yeah. caught up with them? Um, still, when I look at this matchup, this is a golden opportunity for everybody on the Saints team. You have so many people that are trying to prove themselves come Sunday, right? Jameis Winston trying to prove that he can be a franchise quarterback in this league, that he could be a top 10 guy in this league, and that that 30-30 year, which weighs so heavily on him, that that 30-30 year was the exception, not the rule. This is his chance. Like, for all the talk of it being put up or shut up time for Tua, in, in Miami or Jalen in Philly, make no mistake, Jameis Winston is in the exact same boat in New Orleans. Like, you have surrounded him with weapons. You have given him everything. Now he has, he has a good defense. It's a good complimentary team. Right. An elite uh, field goal kicker. Um, we'll see how Gillikin does over another year, but, I mean, Gillikin seems like a very good punter. So he has a complete complimentary football team, this time with elite skill weapons. So, yes, Jameis Winston has to prove himself. Dennis Allen has to prove. That that nine and twenty-seven record or whatever it is from his time in Oakland, and that too was just the byproduct of being a part of an awful organization, and a byproduct of him um, 
and, and a byproduct of maybe his youth, right? Like he, he kind of said it himself. Like he was very young at the time. He was right. very much thrust in to that, and it was uh, it was all it all happened very quickly. Can he prove? here that he can be a successful NFL head coach. And then you even get into like Pete Carmichael, which when you talk about replacing, okay, they asked me this on Atlanta radio, What? and I'll ask it to you, Jake. What is the biggest issue with replacing Sean Payton? I would just say the in-game situations are going to be something that he was so elite at and he had so much experience at and he came on the other side successful at and now you're trying to find someone that does not have that success. Also, at the coordinator position, you're trying to find somebody that on a third and nine doesn't start flipping the play sheet and knows what he wants to go to mm-hmm. because he's been in that situation so many times before. So I kind of said the same thing, right? It, but, 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 but that is going to be on Pete Carmichael to prove that at least from a play calling and theory standpoint that like, because I, 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 I agree with you. I feel like... Carmichael will ease the actual offensive mind. I do think, like you said, I think you lose the the play calling experience. I think you lose a little bit of the respect and kind of cachet that Sean Payton carried around, right? If things start to go bad, I'll be interested to see how the team continues to respond to Dennis Allen. But the point of all of this is so many people have reached this point in their life where this is now their second opportunity maybe to go out there and make people believe in them. And you get a pretty favorable draw to start this thing off. Like in this league where every single win matters, nine and eight puts you playoff adjacent, 10 wins gets you in the playoffs. You have a golden opportunity to go snag one of those wins on Sunday against a team that relative to the NFL is lesser than you. So go make it happen. Do not blow this like you did against the Giants last year where the Panthers early on last year. That ends up biting you in the ass and being the reason why you do not make the playoffs. You have to take advantage Sunday in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and uh, beat down on the Dirty Birds. I mean, I'm right there with you. You do have an opportunity. The NFL is the NFL, but still, like you have a rival. It's the first game. You're on the road. You have this new roster you're excited about. Yeah. Jameis, we know, is going to be excited. He got hurt last year, didn't finish the way that he wanted to because of it. You have no excuses not to go in and win this game. And so, yeah, you should have some juice to it as well.